Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about our very last test for series convergence, the root test. This is sort of like the little brother of the ratio test. They come from the same motivation, geometric series, and they look almost identical. As you'll see on the next slide, the statement of the root test matches the statement of the ratio test almost exactly. Now in practice, the ratio test is often easier to apply. So it usually gets a bit more praise and a bit more attention than the root test. But the root test is still part of the family, right? And in fact, it's just as powerful as the ratio test. As you'll see in our example, there are certain types of series where the root test really shines. There's a small amount of information on this test on page 136 of the course notes, but it's incredibly brief. You're better off visiting section 10.5 of the e-text. Now I mentioned that our motivation for the root test again comes from geometric series. Recall that a geometric series will converge absolutely if the absolute value of r is less than 1, and it will diverge when the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. Now in our last lesson, we thought about the absolute value of r as the ratio of consecutive terms. That led us to the statement of the ratio test. In this lesson, we're going to think of the absolute value of r in a slightly different way, in terms of nth roots. That'll lead us to the statement of the root test. To see what I mean, Consider the nth root of the absolute value of an, the nth term in our geometric series. I can write that term as a r to the n, and then split up my root. I end up with the absolute value of a to the 1 over n, and for r, my exponent and my root cancel out. I just have the absolute value of r. When I send n off to infinity, this exponent is going to go to 0, making this entire term go to 1. So I end up with the absolute value of r. Ah, okay, cool. This means that I can think of the absolute value of r as the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a n. Based on what we know about geometric series, if this limit is less than 1, my series will converge absolutely. If this limit is greater than or equal to 1, this series will diverge. This, folks, is the key idea behind the root test. We're going to take this equivalence, which we know to hold for geometric series, and we're going to extend it to more general series. Let me show you the statement on the next slide. All right, well, here it is, folks, your very last series convergence test, the root test. Just like the ratio test, we're going to compute a limit. And if that limit is bigger than 1, less than 1, or equal to 1, we'll be able to make certain conclusions. This time, the limit we're computing is the nth root of the absolute value of a n as n goes off to infinity. We're going to assume that that limit exists or is equal to infinity, and we'll denote it by l. Now, just like with the ratio test, if l is less than 1, our series will converge absolutely. It's sort of behaving in a way that's comparable to a convergent geometric series. If l is bigger than 1, then the series will diverge, because it's behaving in a way that's comparable to a divergent geometric series. Finally, if L equals 1, the test fails. We can't draw any conclusions without applying further tests. The series could converge absolutely, converge conditionally, or it could diverge. And there you go, the statement of the root test. Let's check out an example to see how this test can be used. Consider the following example. We have the sum from 1 to infinity of n times 2n plus 3 over 7n minus 4 to the n. Does this series converge or diverge? Well, notice that here we have a function of n raised to a power that's also a function of n. This is exactly the situation where the root test shines, f of n to the power of g of n. So let's go ahead and try the root test here. To apply the root test, what do I have to compute again? The limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a n. Okay, so in this case, I have to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n times 2n plus 3 over 7n minus 4 to the power of n. Notice that everything in sight is positive, so I can actually leave off the absolute value bars. Now if I break up this nth root, I have the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n, and then I have to take the nth root of this expression, but the root and the exponent are going to kill each other. This is why the root test is so useful. I'm just left with 2n plus 3 over 7n minus 4. Okay, cool. Now this term here is going to tend to 2 sevenths when n goes off to infinity. So we're just left to determine what happens to this term, the nth root of n, when n goes off to infinity. 
This might look like a complicated limit, but it's really not so bad. We can evaluate it using L'Hopital's rule. So I'm actually going to do this calculation off to the side here. I'm looking for the limit as n tends to infinity of n to the 1 over n. Now this is a limit of the form infinity to the 0, an indeterminate form, right? To write this in a form where L'Hopital's rule can be used, I'm going to apply the natural log. That's going to bring this power down. But of course, I can't just freely apply a logarithm. I'm going to have to make up for it by also writing this as an exponent of e. The log and the e will cancel out. So I have e to the limit as n tends to infinity. I bring the power down. That gives me 1 over n ln n. Okay, this is now of the form where I can apply L'Hopital's rule, infinity over infinity. So if I apply L'Hopital's rule, I have e to the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over n over 1. That's e to the 0, which is 1. Ah, okay, great. So my second term tends to 2 sevenths, my first term tends to 1, my entire limit for the root test is going to tend to 2 sevenths. So what do we conclude? Well, in this case, our limit is less than 1. And according to the root test, if we get a result less than 1, the series will converge absolutely. Now notice the terms of this series are already positive, so convergence and absolute convergence here is the same. We have a convergent series. Now as you may have noticed in the last example, computing limits that involve nth roots can be a little tricky sometimes. So here I've summarized four limits that you might encounter when applying the root test that you are free to use in your calculations. Firstly, if you have a positive constant, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of c is going to be 1. That's pretty easy to show, because this is really c to the 1 over n. That's going to tend to c to the 0, which is 1. For the next limit, if you have n to some positive power, any positive power you like, then the nth root of that expression is going to tend to 1. That you can prove just like we did on the last slide using L'Hopital's rule. Similarly, if you encounter the nth root of ln n, that's also going to tend to 1. Again, you can prove that using L'Hopital's rule. The last limit's a little tricky. It turns out that the nth root of n factorial actually tends to infinity. Now, you can't prove this with L'Hopital's rule, but you could use something else, like, say, Stirling's formula. That's not something that I expect you to know, however, so you're free to use this limit without proof. That said, if you see a term like n factorial, you can usually avoid this altogether by just using the ratio test. The ratio test handles factorials much, much better.